My name is John Mark Comer from Bridgetown Church. Nine years ago, my wife and I and a group of friends started to dream about planting a church in the urban core of Portland, Oregon. At the time, experts were calling Portland the church planter's graveyard. Portland is what social critics call a post-Christian city, meaning this entire city is in many ways living in a reaction against Christ and definitely not for Christ. But in spite of that, a group of us just felt the call of God to move into the urban core of the city and to start a church. Fast forward to today and Bridgetown Church is thriving. We have upwards of 70 Bridgetown communities and neighborhoods all across the urban core of the city where 15 or 20 people share a weekly meal around the bread and the cup and practice the way of Jesus. Then on Sundays, we meet on the east side in the mornings at Old Laurelhurst Church, and then on the west side, still downtown, right where we started at First Baptist on 12th and Taylor. A year ago, we put out the word, the official word to the city and to our church that we're on the hunt to buy an old church building somewhere in the city center. For the last six months, we've built relationship with the leaders and the community at Holiday Park Church of God, right in the corner of 21st and Tillamook in the Inner East Side. Beautiful historic church that's down to about 25 people on a Sunday morning. And they have said to us multiple times, you are doing what we wanted to do in this neighborhood. And we see Bridgetown Church as the continuation of our story. So with great relationship, we together have decided that that we want to buy this building from them at a reduced rate. Now, why a building? Why buy one? Why all the effort and energy when Bridgetown's doing great? We have beautiful spaces that we rent. Well, there are a number of reasons behind this decision. The first one is this city is full of old buildings that have housed, and some of them still do house, followers of Jesus. But tragically, many of them, if not most, have fallen into disuse and disrepair. And these buildings are symbols. They're more than landmarks. These are symbols to to the city, that very architecture was designed to preach the gospel to the city. And yet tragically, so many of these buildings have become symbols to the city, but not of the life of Jesus and his kingdom, but of the death of the church and its story. So we feel a responsibility to recapture this building and not let it get torn down, not let it get turned into something else, but to take it and then eventually pass it on to yet again, the next generation. Secondly, because we don't own a space, we're really limited and the capacity of what we can and can't do as a church. But this will just open up a whole new realm of possibility to have a space like this. We think there's potential for at least 600 seats in this space. It's beautiful. Actually, the interior of this room is in pristine condition. We would obviously host our Sunday morning gatherings here. Right off to the side is a beautiful little chapel. Across the hall is a room that we want to create a giant hospitality center. We want to put up a 50-foot table all the way down. There's already a fireplace at the other end and a kitchenette. And we want to create space for Alpha. We'll host basics here, communities during the week, all sorts of family events just to create community in this space. Across the hall, there are children's spaces for Sunday. And then we want to repurpose these during the week as a visitation center for DHS. There's space outside for a community garden. There's two parking lots with 68 parking spaces. Then when you go downstairs, there is a 6,000 square foot daylight basement with a full industrial kitchen. We have so many ideas about this place for justice, a warming center in the winter, a collection center for refugee care collective, and a department store with food and clothing. There is just so much potential in this space. Finally, this building will give us a rooted presence in the city. To feel at home in a place, you have to have the prospect of staying there. It's about permanence. This will enable us to root ourselves in the soil of this city, to take up residence in a neighborhood. We need to raise $3 million over the next year by December 2019 to make this happen. Ideally, a year from now, we have this building, it's renovated, and we're debt free. The good news is we have quite a bit of money that we've saved up over the last few years, so we already have the budget for the renovation. We just need to raise the money for the building. $3 million is about, we think, a third of what this building is worth, and the church has decided to sell to us for a reduced rate, not because they want the money, because they want to give 
the money away to missionaries and mission organizations. So the cool thing about this is if you give to this project, you're really giving to two things at once. You're giving to buy a building to open space for Bridgetown and the city, but you're also giving to expand the kingdom of God all around the world. And we just ask you to go before God, pray, think, dream, and see what God will put on your heart if you want to be a part of this project to see the kingdom of God come in Portland as it is in heaven.